So thank you all for joining us um, for <clears throat> the second attempt to do a CVCRM 101 webinar. Uh, if you were here last week with us uh, while we had some technical difficulties, we appreciate you coming back. Um, if you're here for the first time, welcome. We'd like to uh, thank CiviCRM.org for hosting this webinar and I look forward to uh, giving you a bit more information about how CiviCRM can help your organization and uh, what all it can do. So if we're ready, let's get started. If you'd like to tweet about today's webinar, uh, you can use the hashtag CiviCRM. And if you'd like to mention us, you can use the um, our Twitter username, Square. So today we have an audience from the United States, uh, Canada, and UK. So thank you all for joining us. And CiviCRM is used by a number of a number of organizations across the globe um, in the United States, Europe, and Asia. So today we'll be talking about several things. We'll be looking at um, what an organization might want or need from a CRM system and what that is. Uh, we'll be looking at key features of Civi CRM, looking at the different components that Civi CRM has to offer, and some different use cases for uh, how Civi CRM's components and features can be used with your organization. So first we'll talk about what a CRM is. Um, a CRM is, generally speaking, a contact relationship management system, and those different types of contacts, depending on the organization, can include clients, customers, and constituents, um, and a number of other uh, different types of individuals, organizations, or households. Uh, the CRM system is made to be able to track and manage the relationship between those different kinds of contacts. Generally, when we looked at, <clears throat> excuse me, when we look at desktop-based CRMs, uh, we've looked at it as a one-to-many relationship. So, an organization is managing the relationships with their clients or constituents, and only trying to track their particular relationship um, with those people. Uh, in more recent CRM implementations, we have a different sort of structure. Uh, this is actually a many-to-many -many relationship where each of those type of contacts can also manage mm -hmm. their relationships with each other. In the software as a service model, this gives us a lot of power, um, but it also requires a different kind of CRM. When we bring in the web aspect of CRM, we also have to consider that many different, say, many different software as a service platforms have little tiny pieces of your contact data, each one of these in a different place. What we really need is some way to tie all of these different pieces of data together in one place. That's where Civi CRM comes in. CiviCRM is a fully open source package. Uh, it's an internationalized package which works in several different languages, um, and not only the labels and um, other UI items in those systems, but also the uh, different types of addresses, um, location, all the location management dates, and uh, other critical contact information. CiviCRM is web-based completely, which means you're not tied down to uh, individual machine licenses in order to use it, and you can use it from anywhere, anytime. Civi so CRM is also fully integrated with your content management system. So instead of being separate from 
instead of being something that's separate and having to be integrated or to be on totally separate platforms where you're dealing with multiple pieces of information, you can deal with all of your contact information as well as your web content in one place. From a practical standpoint, Civic CRM is used by a number of different uh, membership associations, so alumni associations, um, trade groups, etc. Um, can be used by activists since it has a number of pieces of functionality for walk listing and other um, organizer and government level activities. Uh, it can be used with schools or businesses. Some examples of these different organizations uh, using Civic CRM. Excuse me, sorry, you may be noticing that there is a um, gray block on the screen. Uh, if we can get that taken care of, that would be great. So organizations that are using Civi CRM. Uh, some of these, Amnesty International is an example. Um, we have other organizations like the Conservation Fund. Also the Linux Foundation. TechSoup. and the Greater Houston Off-Road Biking Association. And these are all organizations of varying sizes that are using Civic CRM both in their business and uh, nonprofit capacities. In addition, we have some organi the organizations like the Wikimedia Foundation and the Electronic Frontier Foundation who are also large-scale users of Civic CRM. Civic CRM's core functionality is in, of course, managing contacts. So those contacts can be members, clients, volunteers, donors, or affiliates. And its primary power is in being able to segment those contacts uh, by using groups, contact, contact subtypes, and tags to be able to organize them, relationships where you can not only relate uh, contacts to, say, their employer uh, as, as an organization, but also contacts to each other, say, in a parent-child relationship, uh, or contacts to your households, et cetera. Uh, you can track the activities of all of these contacts. Uh, these can be external activities such as phone calls or emails, uh, to-do list items. They can also be internal activities to CRM uh, such as event registrations or membership creations or mass emailings. You also have um, some pretty powerful reminder capabilities. So you can provide reminders to both admin users as far as uh, case-based administration uh, for tasks that need to be done next for some of those uh, activity follow-ups. And you can provide uh, reminders to the contacts in your system to, say, register for an event or update their membership. Some of Civic CRM's key features include being extensible. So it has a powerful system of APIs and hooks uh, and is also, because it's fully open source, completely customizable. So you can integrate this with a third-party system uh, or provide some additional functionality that the VCRM doesn't currently have. It's tightly integrated with your CMS. Um, it specifically integrates with Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress. So you get the full functionality of those CMSs and their user management capabilities combined with all of the contact data management that the VCRM has to offer. And you can synchronize those users directly from one system to the other so that when you create users on one side, um, those contacts are reflected in the other. There's also a powerful import-export functionality which can be done either through CSV um, or SQL on the import side. And the export side also includes um, Excel exporting. So VCRM also has several different kinds of search. And this can be as simple as a keyword search on any any one of the uh, primary fields, so first name, last name, email address. Uh, it can go down to an advanced search of every different kind of field in Civi CRM, or even more powerful searches such as a uh, SQL-like uh, query builder.
By the way, feel free to um, use the chat functionality uh, in Meeting Burner here to ask a question uh, if you'd like to, or if you'd like to have me stop and clarify a point, I'd be happy to do that. Some other key features of Civi CRM are access control. So not only does it take advantage of the individual levels of access control in the CMS, but also has its own access control to be able to allow groups of contacts to only see information that's relevant to them. Civi CRM has a full set of, has a full custom field functionality. So if the field you need is not already in Civi CRM, you can add it. And it can have, it has several different methods by which you can add and manage custom fields. Uh, it also has a full deduplication functionality. Uh, it has some, has a number of built-in rules for things like matching on first name, last name, and email address. And you can build your own more complicated rules if those are needed to be able to keep your data clean. Civi CRM is also, also has a significant tracking functionality. So you have logging for each of the activities in CRM, so that, in Civi CRM, so that you can see who's doing what at any time. Um, it also has a significant mapping functionality built in, and it's tied in with the Open Maps and Google Maps APIs, so that for things like events um, and for contact searches in what Civi CRM refers to as profiles, you can see how those all of that data relates. Um, via map. So VCRM has four core components and several additional ones. The core ones are Civi Contribute, Civi Member, Civi Event, and Civi Mail. There are also additional components such as Civi Grant um, and Civi Pledge along with some along with additional third party extensions such as Civi HR and Civi Volunteer. Civi Contribute has several different um, capabilities. It can manage things like donate, donations and pledges. Um, it can do this both online and offline. So whether you have uh, individual users coming into your website and doing e-commerce, say over any one of the major payment processors, um, you, can track the, you can track and receive those financial transactions. You can also enter those offline. So if you have checks or cash transactions or just want to be able to uh, help a donor out, um, or receive, some, receive a payment that didn't work online the way the user expected, then you can enter and track those as well. Um, Civi CRM provides um, real-time receipts for all of those transactions and has a number of different plugins, including multiple different payment processors and other donor management tools. Next component is Civi Member. And this is ma managing all sorts of different kinds of memberships. So you can provide self-service access to membership for your members. So they, you can provide them a number of different tiers of membership that they can select. These can be paid or non-paid and can be done on a rolling or annual basis. Um, there are also uh, there is also a pretty significant rules functionality in Civi Member so that you can decide when exactly, um, you know, a, membership might change status. So if you have um, situations where you don't want members to lose all of their privileges immediately once their membership expires, um, you can set them into a status like a grace period, or you can have uh, approval stages so that you can have Civi CRM manage uh, where in the process they will be. So perhaps they, you can wait for an internal approval before someone gets access to something. The next component is Civi Event. This is a full event management system. Uh, this gives you the, the ability to do some online participant tracking. Um, you can have, again, self-service access to have users sign up for individual events, or you can sign them up uh, via the admin interface as well and see whether or not they've, excuse me, have uh, paid for their, have paid for events versus paid for events, or if perhaps they're somewhere in the middle of that process. Uh, the events can have a pretty sophisticated pricing structure using Civi CRM's price sets. So you can do things like uh, multiple options for a conference level type event where you have, uh, say, a t-shirt or a meal that's being purchased. And you can provide discounts for various points in the process like an early bird discount or a member discount uh, or other sorts of things with discount codes. Um, the event functionality also is, 
also provides a receipt um, when events are registered for, either on the admin side or uh, by self-service, and we'll do that via email and PDF. The CIVI event also provides iCal and RSS feeds so that you can tie these in with your external calendaring systems. Next component is CIVI mail, and CIVI mail allows for personalized mass email from inside one system. So rather than going out to, say, a MailChimp or a Constant Contact, you will have both your contacts and your mass mailing system all in one place. Um, CIVI CRM has a token system, so you can do all of the standard mail merge functionality, and with, because it's customizable, you can create your own. CIVI mail provides statistics such as bounce rates and click tracking, um, it has all of the standard and government required opt-out functionality and unsubscribe functionality so that you can uh, be in compliance with all of the rules surrounding uh, mass email, mass email um, tracking and functionality. So when you're looking at starting a CIVI CRM installation, there are several things you need to keep in mind. So first, um, planning is very important. Uh, with, any, with any CRM installation, you really want to have a good idea of what kind of data you're going to collect, what data you already have, and how you're going to be uh, entering that into the system and implementing that going forward. Uh, keeping it clean is very important, and so having that plan allows you to manage all of the different moving parts of that system so that your data is reliable and you don't spend more time managing it than you do using it. Um, budget is also a significant item when deciding whether to use CIVI CRM or any other CRM system. You want to get a sense of what you have available and where you might bring in, where you'd be able to handle, set up an implementation yourself or bring in an implementer to um, help you out with some of the parts of that process. You also want to have a plan for managing the CRM going forward. So again, deciding on workflow and the different internal processes of how you're going to manage all of your contact data. Some of the costs of the CRM are implementation. So again, uh, figuring out how to get all that data in and who's going to do it. Uh, if you're hiring an external implementer to uh, set up your system for you, then you'll need to look at that as well. Um, configuration of the system. Uh, there are a lot of things in CIVI CRM to configure. And so taking, budgeting a significant, budgeting an appropriate amount of time to go through those items and make sure everything is where you want it is important. Hosting is definitely an important option. Uh, CIVI CRM will not run on your standard budget hosting, uh, at least not very well. You would need to have something like uh, VPS or another um, higher capability hosting environment. And you would want to have one that does things like regular, that is going to offer services like regular backups and uh, operating system tuning so that you can keep the system well optimized and your data, all of your data secure and easy to access. Um, upgrades are also important. So CIVI CRM is a piece of open source software and like any software, upgrades are important to fix bugs that may have been found in the system or add additional functionality. And so it's important to include in the cost for running the system regular upgrades to it. And to help you do all of these things, we have a number of resources. CivicRM.org has a number of resources. There are the forums which can be found on CivicRM.org, and this is a compendium of uh, conversations that have been had um, and ongoing conversation about how to do, uh, how individual users are implementing different, different implementations of CIVI CRM. Uh, not mentioned here also is uh, the new Stack Exchange channel for CIVI CRM. There you can go and ask questions and uh, get responses from experts in CIVI CRM. Uh, there's a significant amount of online documentation. Uh, most of this is done through CIVI CRM's wiki, and you can find just about anything you want to know on CIVI CRM there. Um, we also have the ebook, which is a downloadable version of a more step-by-step -step set of instructions 
for using the different individual functions in WCRM. Also, some additional resources for CiviCRM. Uh, if you'd like to go take a demo and be able to see a, what kind of a vanilla version of CiviCRM could do for you and play around uh, before you commit to downloading or installing that, um, you can go to demo.civicrm.org and use it on your platform of choice, uh, either Drupal, Joomla, or WordPress. Um, you can also check out square.com um, for a number of different resources and articles on how to how to use and implement CiviCRM. CiviCRM has a pretty vibrant uh, user community. So once, a, so once a year, there's an, a CiviC, the CiviCon World Conference that's hosted in, in the United States. There also usually is one, uh, usually is one in Europe in the fall, um, often in London. Um, the user summit, which is a more user focused rather than develop, developer focused event, uh, is held in Washington, D.C. in the fall. There are also a number of periodic online uh, trainings and events that happen, uh, and in person trainings as well, um, all over the United States, Canada, and Europe. Um, you can also use the IRC channel uh, where you can talk to CiviCRM developers and other users and implementers of CiviCRM. And there are a number of local meetups. Uh, in a number of cities um, worldwide where you can talk to other users about how they're using CiviCRM. So I think that's it for the moment. Uh, if you'd like to stay around and uh, answer, ask some questions or um, discuss uh, any of the points that we've already uh, mentioned in the webinar, uh, feel free. I would love to answer your questions. Uh, if not, I appreciate you attending and uh, hope you have a good day. Uh, I wasn't planning on going through any screenshots today, but if you'd like to take a look at the uh, at demo.cvcrm.org, then you'll be able to kind of walk through exactly how that works um, and be able to kind of play with it on your own a lot better than I'd be able to show in screenshots. Uh, the question was asked, does Civi offer a way to reset without deleting each individual entry? Uh, yes, it, do, it, it does, but you would have to um, – there is definitely a batch functionality for deleting entries, uh, so you can delete all of the entries that are on an individual screen, that are on an individual screen or that match a particular search criteria. Um, you can also do that directly, uh, directly in the database or via a cron or scheduled job if there was a regular need to do that. So my helper on the other end is actually showing a screenshot of the CiviCRM demo on Drupal. Um, if you could actually go to the – and 
show what it would look like to uh, do bash operations on a contact. That would be great. Uh, actually, if you could show a search result list of contacts and, and look at the batch operations, that was kind of what I was going for. Right, so you can see in the, in the demo here that you'd have the option to select one or more search results based on your search criteria, and then delete among a number of other functions are available to you for either the selected by any of the contacts that you've selected from the result list, or you can choose all of the contacts that are in that, that match that search result. Do we have any other questions? All right, well, if there are no other questions, then I think we will wrap up today's webinar, and I appreciate you all attending. Uh, feel free to look for more information on civicrm.org. Thank you very much, and have a good day.